Got well, it. how did you both hook up anyway? You're on this way. You're both from the Philadelphia area, right? We met yeah. on Grinder, and uh, <laughs> it's been love ever since. Hey, welcome back to Music Explorer. If you like Tantric or Cinderella, we have guitarist Sebastian Labar and bassist Jaron Julino from Tantric. We find out how they both met, their influences, the story of the aluminum can bass, being a land pirate, and of course, what's going on in the Tantric world. Why don't we just start out with started playing you know, guitar and bass. Sebastian, we all know how your fa- you know, how you got your start. Your father was in Cinderella. So tell us how that all started there for you. The obvious influence, Dad. I always There was a guitar always around, and he always just kind of pushing it on me. But uh, I didn't really take to it until I was like early teens when I saw my cousin kind of like take to it, and he joined School of Rock. And, yeah, just kind of followed that through. Besides your father, who were your influences? It was like Angus Young was my first big influence. My first like real guitar was in a Gibson SG. Nice. Uh, um, and then after that, I kind of just like followed all of Ozzy's guitar players, and it was it was a good stepping stone like to each guy. Because like Iomi, he had good slow ham kind of solos. Then you step into Randy, and it gives you more technique. And then like Jake and then Zach. So Jaron, how did you start? Just from seeing friends play, man. Uh, I, knew, I was always a fan of music, but never really, I guess, thought that I could do it. And then once I saw my friend, you know, doing Slayer covers and stuff when I was like 15, it like blew my mind that people my age could do that. So kind of put it all in perspective for me. And I realized that bass players are always available for work because you know nobody ever can find a bass player. So right. well, how did you both hook up anyway? You're on this way. You're both from the Philadelphia area, right? We met yeah. on Grinder. <laughs> and uh, it's been love ever since. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. But no, man, we, we met in Mach 22. You know, Sebastian was playing in Mach before I joined and came in in like in April of 2013 and pretty much been playing together ever since. What made you leave Mach 22? Just didn't really work, like with schedule wise. I mean, we both got into, into Tantric and then, you know, it just became less frequent that we could get home to work with them. And, you know, we were kind of, in a way, almost hindering them from doing anything because they were constantly waiting on us. So. Sebastian, your father, Jeff, produced your first album, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. We recorded it with him down at uh, Sound Dragon Sound Studio. Dragon. Yeah. yeah, Sound Dragon Studio. But uh, it was him and uh, his buddy, Ronnie Honeycutt, who is the original singer for Jackal. Then you guys got to open up for Bon Jovi and a bunch of others. What was it? Bon Jovi, Steel Panther, Guns N' Roses, uh, Brett Michaels, you name it, man. Any, yeah. any big show that pretty much came through Philly, you know, we were fortunate enough to get on. You know, we got to play some places that most people, you know, never dream of playing. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. How did you feel, you know, in playing in front of 20,000 people for the first time? Intimidated? <laughs> it was really fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really hot day, but we were, like, loaded with adrenaline, and we were all hyped, ready to go. It was so much fun. You guys actually going to be touring with uh, you know puddle of mud and get the mud fest going again? Uh, I saw some dates. I don't know if it's going to be like as in previous years. But I'm sure we'll see them. We always end up on a bill, you know, with bands like that, whether it's Alive or Puddle of Mud. Yeah, and you just got you released a new album now, right? It'll be out July 23rd. Some of all things. Yes, yep. sir. Tell us a little about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did. We started recording it last summer, and uh, we finished it up. I would say the second half of the summer. Um, Sebastian contributed a ton of material to it, and uh, tons of good stuff on there. You know, if you like tantric at any point in our career, you would like you know what you're gonna hear. It's got a mix of sounds from the entire span. So you have two remakes on the album, especially Breakdown. What brought you to do the uh, remix? Oh, I think they just. Uh, we were talking about just like kind of freshening up. Just the sound and having us record on them, you know, so it sounds like the current band. And I, I thought it was definitely a good move. What are your favorite songs to play out of, out of all the songs you got? I like uh, Chasing After, Revolution, Fall Down. There's a lot of good ones in there. What about you, John? Mind Control, After We Go. Um, you know, you got to do the ones for the fans. And then, you know, we, we do ones for ourselves, you know, deeper cuts or whatever, you know, try to give a little bit of everything. Yeah, we try to switch it up every night. So I guess you could say that's a prank because Hugo never knows anything or what, what's going on. So he learns what songs we're doing as they're starting. So it's a good prank. Yeah, that's funny. It's funny to me. At least. Somebody gave you an, uh, an aluminum can base. Uh, it's not just an aluminum can base. It's a Mountain Dew base. Mountain but, uh, Dew base. <laughs> yeah, my buddy Chris Schmidt in Florida, man, he knows I'm a Mountain Dew freak. Uh, one day I came home to a gigantic box. Uh, I opened it up, man. It's pretty badass, but... Uh, like you said, it's aluminum, so when you plug it in, it's pretty noisy. I gotta figure it out so I can take it off stage. <laughs> How do, does it stay in tune? <laughs> it stays in tune, man. The, the neck is huge, man. It's pretty crazy, but uh, the action 
crazy and it's just it's a beast man it's kind of heavy but what, it's cool what, you know decoration <laughs> but you can still play it what pickups you got on it i don't even think there are pickups in it i don't even know how it <laughs> even works the aluminum is the yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah right it's real weird but it's cool both of you guys are called land pirates He's the official yeah, yeah, yeah. land pirate. He's got the tattoo. I'm just behind the scenes uh, slave. That's that, so was, cool. uh, that was a, a tour joke that turned into a tattoo. <laughs> that's funny. But that's what you guys are doing. You are land pirates, just rolling around touring the country. That's Pretty much. Surfing yeah. the highway, man. Living out of an RV. Yeah, that's some of the funniest stuff you guys come across. I won't say too many because a lot of these are unsolved mysteries still. I'm trying to think of one we can mention. We, we like to leave stuff in each other's bags or clothing or it's like kind of I, like... Souvenir. Yeah, yeah. It's like hot potato, but they don't know how to pay a hot potato. Kind of. It's like something <laughs> nobody wants to have in their possession, but somehow it just keeps ending up in somebody's stuff and it's like uh, get rid of it as fast as possible type of thing. <laughs> So you guys also be hanging out with George Lynch uh, every now and then, right? What's what's the story with that? We like to see him as much as yeah. possible. Not necessarily see him as in person, but at least see his shows. <laughs> yeah, big fan, man. Anytime we can get time in to go see him, we go, we do. We've been lucky to run into a bunch now. And now we got John Thayer, who's George's tech. He it works with us when George is off. So some kind of full circle type of thing going on. And it's an honor. Well, how did it all start? Going to see George, really. Yeah, man. I started in eighth grade when my history teacher gave me back <laughs> for the attack on Burn CD. That's how it started. All right, man. Thanks, man. Well, you guys have fun and keep on rocking. Thanks, bro. See you. Yeah,